Amidst his torments, Horus was heard whispering forgiveness to his foes. Forgive, O oh my God, he cried, the trespasses of this people. Deal with them in thy mercy, for they know not what we have already discovered and cherished. I have striven to show them the path that leads to their salvation. Behold how they have arisen to overwhelm and kill me. Show them, O oh God, the way of truth and turn their ignorance into faith. In his hour of agony, the Seed Ikumi, who had so treacherously deserted the fort, was seen passing by his side. Observing his helplessness, he smote him in the face. You claimed, he cried in haughty scorn, that your voice was the voice of God. If you speak the truth, burst your bonds asunder and free yourself from the hands of your enemies. Kudus looked steadfastly into his face, sighed deeply and said, May God requite you for your deed inasmuch as you have helped to add to the measure of my afflictions. Approaching the Sabsi Maidan, he raised his voice and said, Would that my mother were with me, and could see with her own eyes the splendors of my nuptials. He had scarcely spoken these words, when the enraged multitude fell upon him, and tearing his body to pieces, threw the scattered members into the fire which they had kindled for that purpose. In the middle of the night, what still remained of the fragments of that burned and mutilated body was gathered by the hand of a devoted friend and interred in a place not far distant from the scene of his martyrdom. And a footnote here says, He who knew Kudus and who made the pilgrimage with him is the one upon whom eight unities have passed, and God honoured him among his angels in the heavens because of the way in which he had withdrawn himself from all and because he was without blame in the sight of God, from the Persian Bayan, Volume 2, page 164. The footnote continues, Yet more wonderful than the events above described is the account of them given by Abbas Kuli Khan, with many expressions of admiration to Prince Ahmad Mirza. The late Haji Mirza Jani writes, About two years after the disaster of Sheikh Tabasi, I heard one who, though not a believer, was honest, truthful, and worthy of credit, relate as follows. We were sitting together, and some allusion was made to the war waged by some of those present against Hazrat i Qudus and Jinab i Babul Bab. Prince Ahmad Mirza and Abbas Kuli Khan were amongst the company. The prince questioned Abbas Kuli Khan about the matter, and he replied thus The truth of the matter is that anyone who had not seen Kabila would, if he had seen Tabasi, not only have comprehended what there took place, but would have ceased to consider it. And had he seen Mullah Hussein of Bafarush, he would have been convinced that the chief of martyrs had returned to earth, and had he witnessed my deeds, he would assuredly have said, This is Shimir, come back with sword and lance. I swear by the sacred plume of his majesty, the centre of the universe, that one day Mullah Hussein, having on his head a green turban, and over his shoulder a shroud, came forth from the castle, stood forth in the open field, and leaning on a lance, which he held in his hand, said, O oh people, why, without inquiry, and under the influence of passion and prejudice and misrepresentation, do ye act so cruelly towards us, and strive without cause to shed innocent blood? Be ashamed before the Creator of the universe, and at least give us passage, that we may depart out of this land. Seeing that the soldiers were moved, I opened fire, and ordered the troops to shout so as to drown his voice. Again I saw him lean on his lance, and heard him cry, Is there any who will help me? Three times, so that all heard him cry. At that moment all the soldiers were silent, and some began to weep, and many of the horsemen were visibly affected. Fearing that the army might be seduced from their allegiance, I again ordered them to fire and shout. Then I saw Mullah Hussein unsheath his sword, raise his face towards heaven, and heard him exclaim, O God, I have completed the proof to this host, but it availeth not. Then he began to attack us on the right and on the left. I swear by God that on that day he wielded the sword in such wise as transcends the power of man. Only the horsemen of Mazinderan held their ground and refused to flee. And when Mullah Hussein was well warmed to the fray, he overtook a fugitive soldier. The soldier sheltered himself behind a tree, and further strove to shield himself with his musket. Mullah Hussein dealt him such a blow with his sword, that he clave him and the tree and the musket into six pieces. And during all that war, 
Not once was his sword stroke at fault, but every blow that he struck fell true. And by the nature of their wounds, I could recognize all whom Mullah Hussein had cut down with his sword. And since I had heard and knew that none could rightly wield the sword save the chief of believers, and that it was well nigh impossible for sword to cut so true, therefore I forbade all who were aware of this thing to mention it or to make it known, lest the troops should be discouraged and should wax faint in the fight. But in truth, I know not what had been shown to these people, or what they had seen, that they came forth to battle with such alacrity and joy, and engaged so eagerly and gladly in the strife, without displaying in their countenances any trace of fear or apprehension. One would imagine that in their eyes the keen sword and blood-spilling dagger were but means to the attainment of everlasting life, and so eagerly did their necks and bosoms welcome them that they circled like salamanders round the fiery hail of bullets. And the astonishing thing was that all these men were scholars and men of learning, sedentary recluses of the college and the cloister, delicately nurtured and of weakly frame, inured indeed to austerities, but strangers to the roar of cannon, the rattle of musketry, and the field of battle. During the last three months of the siege, moreover, they were absolutely without bread and water, and were reduced to the extreme of weakness through lack of even such pittance of food as is su sufficient to sustain life. Notwithstanding this, it seemed as if in time of battle a new spirit were breathed into their frames, insomuch that the imagination of men cannot conceive the vehemence of their courage and valour. They used to expose their bodies to the bullets and cannonballs not only fearlessly and courageously, but eagerly and joyously, seeming to regard the battlefield as a banquet, and to be bent on casting away their lives. From the Tariq-i-Jadid, pages 106 to 109. It would be appropriate at this juncture to place on record the names of those martyrs who participated in the defence of the fort of Sheikh Tabasi, in the hope that generations yet to come may recall with pride and gratitude the names, no less than the deeds, of those pioneers who, by their life and death, have so greatly enriched the annals of God's immortal faith. Such names, as I have been able to collect from various sources, and for which I am particularly indebted to Ismulahul Mim, Ismulahul Javad, and Ismulahul Assad, I now proceed to enumerate, trusting that even as in the world beyond their souls have been invested with the light of unfading glory, their names may likewise linger for ever on the tongues of men, that their mention may continue to evoke a like spirit of enthusiasm and devotion in the hearts of those to whom this priceless heritage has been transmitted. From my informants, I not only have been able to gather the names of most of those who fell in the course of that memorable siege, but have also succeeded in obtaining a representative though incomplete list of all those martyrs who, from the year 1260, that is A.D. 1844, until the present day, the latter part of the month of Rabiul Aval in the year A.H. 1306, that is November to December A.D. 1888, have laid down their lives in the path of the cause of God. It is my intention to make mention of each of these names in connection with a particular event with which it is chiefly connected. As to those who quaff the cup of martyrdom while defending the fort of Tabasi, their names are as follows. First and foremost among them stand Kudus, upon whom the Bar bestowed the name Ismulahul Akhar, a footnote says literally meaning the last name of God. He, the last letter of the living, and the Bar's chosen companion on his pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina was, together with Mullah Sadiq and Mullah Ali Akbari Ardistani, the first to suffer persecution on Persian soil for the sake of the cause of God. He was only 18 years of age when he left his, na his native town of Bafurush for Karbala. For about four years he sat at the feet of Sir Qazim, and at the age of 22 met and recognized his beloved in Shiraz. Five years later, on the 23rd of Jamadiyuth Thani, in the year A.H. 1265, the 16th of May, A.D. 1849, he was destined to fall in the Sabzi Maidan of Bafurush, a victim of the most refined and wanton barbarity at the hands of the enemy. The Bab, and at a later time Baha'u'llah, have mourned in unnumbered tablets and prayers his loss, and have lavished on him their eulogies. Such was the honour accorded to him by Baha'u'llah, that in his commentary 
on the verse of Kulut Ta'am, uh, footnote here says literally the last point, which he, Baha'u'llah, revealed while in Baghdad, he conferred upon him the unrivaled station of the nukti e ukra a station second to none except that of the Bab himself. And a footnote of nukti e ukra means uh, is from the Quran, uh, 393. Mullah Hussein surnamed the Babu Bab, the first to recognize and embrace the new revelation. At the age of 18, he too departed from his native town of Bushrui in Khurasan for Karbala, and for a period of nine years remained closely associated with Syed Qasim. Four years prior to the declaration of the Bab, acting according to the instructions of Syed Qasim, he met in Isfahan the learned Mushtahed Syed Bakir Irashti and in Mashhad Mirza Askari, to both of whom he delivered with dignity and eloquence the messages with which he had been entrusted by his leader. The circumstances attending his martyrdom evoked the Bab's inexpressible sorrow, a sorrow that found vent in eulogies and prayers of such great number as would be equivalent to thrice the volume of the Quran. In one of his visiting tablets, the Bab asserts that the very dust of the ground where the remains of Mullah Hussein lie buried is endowed with such potency as to bring joy to the disconsolate and healing to the sick. In the Kitabi i Khan, Baha'u'llah extols with still greater force the virtues of Mullah Hussein. But for him, he writes, God would not have been established upon the seat of his enemy, nor have ascended the throne of eternal glory. And third comes Mirza Muhammad Hassan, the brother of Mullah Hussein. And fourth, Mirza Muhammad Bakir, the nephew of Mullah Hussein. He, as well as Mirza Muhammad Hassan, accompanied Mullah Hussein from Bushrui to Kabila and from thence to Shiraz, where they embraced the message of the Bab and were enrolled among the letters of the living. With the exception of the journey of Mullah Hussein to the castle of Marku, they continued to be with him until the time they suffered martyrdom in the fort of Tabasi. And fifth comes the brother-in-law of Mullah Hussein, the father of Mirza Abul Hassan and Mirza Muhammad Hussein both of whom are now in Bushrui, and into whose hands the care of the Barakatul Firdaus, Mullah Hussein's sister, is committed. Both are firm and devoted adherents of the faith. Six, the son of Mullah Ahmad, the elder brother of Mullah Mirza Muhammad i Furuti. He, unlike his uncle, Mullah Mirza Muhammad, suffered martyrdom and was, as testified by the latter, a youth of great piety and distinguished for his learning and his integrity of character. 7. Mirza Muhammad Bakir, known as Harati, though originally a resident of Qayyim. He was a close relative of the father of Nabil i Akbar and was the first in Mashhad to embrace the cause. It was he who built the Babiye and who devotedly served Qudus during his sojourn in that city. When Mullah Hussein hoisted the black standard, he, together with his child, Mirza Muhammad Qazim, eagerly enrolled under his banner and went forth with him to Mazindaran. That child was saved eventually and has now grown up into a fervent and active supporter of the faith in Mashhad. It was Mirza Muhammad Bakir who acted as the standard bearer of the company, who, de who designed the plan of the fort, its walls and turrets, and the moat which surrounded it who succeeded Mullah Hussein in organizing the forces of his companions and in leading the charge against the enemy, and who acted as the intimate companion, the lieutenant and trusted counsellor of Qudus until the hour when he fell a martyr in the path of the cause. 8. Mirza Muhammad Taki i Juveni, a native of Sabsi Far, who was distinguished for his literary accomplishments and was often entrusted by Mullah Hussein with the task of leading the charge against the assailants. His head and that of his fellow companion, Mirza Muhammad Bakir, were impaled on spears and paraded through the streets of Bafarush amid the shouts and howling of an excited populace. 9. Kamba Ali, the fearless and faithful servant of Mullah Hussein, who accompanied him on his journey to Maku and who suffered martyrdom on the very night on which his master fell a victim to the bullets of the enemy. 10. Hassan, and 11. Kuli, who, together with a man named Iskandar, a native of Zanjan, 
bore the body of Mullah Hussein to the fort on the night of his martyrdom and placed it at the feet of Qudus. He it was, the same Hassan, who, by the orders of the chief constable of Mashhad, was led by a halter through the streets of that city. 12. Muhammad Hassan, the brother of Mullah Sadiq, whom the comrades of Kusra slew on the way between Bafarush and the fort of Tabasi. He distinguished himself by his unwavering constancy and had been one of the servants of the shrine of the Imam Riza. 13. Siyad Riza, who, with Mullah Yusuf e Ardibili, was commissioned by Qurus to meet the prince, and who, and who brought back with him the sealed copy of the Quran bearing the oath which the prince had written. He was one of the well-known Siyads of Khurasan and was recognized for his learning as well as for the integrity of his character. 14. Mullah Mardan Ali, one of the noted companions from Khurasan, a resident of the village of Miyame, the site of a well-fortified fortress situated between Sabziva and Shah Rud. He, together with 33 companions, enlisted under the banner of Mullah Hussein on the day of the latter's passage through that village. It was in the Majid of Miyame to which Mullah Hussein had repaired in order to offer the Friday congregational prayer that he delivered his soul-stirring appeal in which he laid stress upon the fulfillment of the tradition relating to the hoisting of the black standard in Khurasan, and in which he declared himself to be its bearer. His eloquent address profoundly impressed his hearers, so much so that on that very day the majority of those who heard him, most of whom were men of distinguished merit, arose and followed him. Only one of those thirty-three companions, a Mullah Issa, survived whose sons are at present in the village of Miyame, actively engaged in the service of the cause. The names of the martyred companions of that village are as follows. 15. Mullah Muhammad Mihdi 16. Mullah Muhammad Jafar 17. Mullah Muhammad ibn e Mullah Muhammad 18. Mullah Rahim 19. Mullah Muhammad Riza 20. Mullah Muhammad Hussein 21. Mullah Muhammad 22. Mullah Yusuf 23. Mullah Yaqub 24. Mullah Ali 25. Mullah Zainul Abidin 26. Mullah Muhammad, son of Mullah Zainul Abidin 27. Mullah Bakir 28. Mullah Abdul Muhammad 29. Mullah Abul Hassan 30. Mullah Ismail, 31, Mullah Abdul Ali, 32, Mullah Akka Baba, 33, Mullah Abdul Javad, 34, Mullah Muhammad Hussein, 35, Mullah Muhammad Bakir, 36, Mullah Muhammad, 37, Haji Hassan, 38, Kabilai Ali, 39. Mullah Kabilai Ali 40. Kabilai Nur Muhammad 41. Muhammad Ibrahim 42. Muhammad Saim 43. Muhammad Hazi 44. Siyid Mihdi 45. Abu Muhammad Of the companions of the village of Sasang, which forms part of the district of Simnan, 18 were martyred. Their names are as follows. 46. Seed Ahmad, whose body was cut to pieces by Mirza Muhammad Taki and the seven ulamas of Sari. He was a noted divine and greatly esteemed for his eloquence and piety. 47. Mir Abu Qasim, Seed Ahmad's brother, who won the crown of martyrdom on the very night on which Mullah Hussein met his death. 48. Mir Mirti, the paternal uncle of Seed Ahmad. 49. Mir Ibrahim, the brother-in-law of Syed Ahmad. 50. Safar Ali, the son of Kabilai Ali, who, together with Kabilai Muhammad, had so strenuously endeavoured to awaken the people of Sarsang from their sleep of heedlessness. Both of them, owing to their infirmities, were unable to proceed to the fort of Dabasi. 51. Muhammad Ali, the son of Kabilai Abu Muhammad. 52. Abu Qasim, the brother of Muhammad Ali. 53. Kabilai Ibrahim. 54. 
Ali Ahmad, 55, Mullah Ali Akbar, 56, Mullah Hussein Ali, 57, Abbas Ali, 58, Hussein Ali, 59, Mullah Ali Asghar, 60, Kabilai Ismail, 61, Ali Khan, 62, Muhammad Ibrahim, 63, Abdul Azim. From the village of Shah Mizad, two fell in defending the fort. 64, Mullah Abu Rahim and 65, Kabilai Kazim. As to the adherents of the faith in Mazindaran, 27 martyrs have thus far been recorded. 66, Mullah Rize Isha, 67, Azim, 68, Kabilai Muhammad Jafar, 69, Syed Hussein, 70, Mohammed Bakir, 71, Syed Razak, 72, Ustad Ibrahim, 73, Mullah Syed e Ziri Kinari, 74, Rizay e Arab, 75, Razul e Banimiri, 76, Mohammed Hussein, the brother of Razul Banimiri, 77, Tahir, 78, Shafi, 79, Kazim, 80, Mullah Muhammad Jan, 81, Masi, the brother of Mullah Muhammad Jan, 82, Isa Baba, 83, Yusuf, 84, Fadlullah, 85, Baba, 86, Safi Kuli, 87, Nizam, 88, Ruhullah, 89, Ali Kuli, 90, Sultan, 91, Jafar, 92, Khalil. Of the believers of Sabat Ku, the five following names have thus far been ascertained. 93, Kabilai Kamba Khalish. 94, Mullah Nad Ali i Mutavali. 95, Abdul Haq. 96, Isabaki Chupan. 97, son of Itabaki Chupan. From the town of Ardistan, the following have suffered martyrdom. 98, Mirza Ali Muhammad, son of Mirza Muhammad Said. 99, Mirza Abdul Vasi, son of Haji Abdul Wahab. 100, Muhammad Hussein, son of Haji Muhammad Sadiq. 101, Muhammad Mihdi, son of Haji Muhammad Ibrahim. 102, Mirza Ahmad, son of Mushtin. 103. Mirza Muhammad, son of Mir Muhammad Taki. From the city of Isfahan, 30 have thus far been recorded. 104. Mullah Jafar, the sifter of wheat, whose name has been mentioned by the Bab in the Persian Bayan. 105. Ustad Akka, surnamed Buzurg Banar. 106. Ustad Hassan, son of Ustad Akka. 107. Ustad Muhammad, son of Ustad Akka. 108. Muhammad Hussein, son of Ustad Akka, whose younger brother Ustad Jafar was sold several times by his enemies until he reached his native city where he now resides. 109. Ustad Kurban Ali Ibana. 110. Ali Akbar, son of Ustad Kurban Ali Ibana. 111. Abdullah, son of Ustad Kurban Ali Ibana. 112. Muhammad i Bakir Naqsh, the maternal uncle of Seer Yahya, son of Mirza Muhammad Ali i Nahri. He was 14 years old and was martyred the very night that Mullah Hussein met his death. 113. Mullah Muhammad Taki. 114. Mullah Muhammad Riza, both brothers of the late Abduz Sali, the gardener of the Rizvan Ad Akka. 115. Mullah Ahmad i Safar. 116. Mullah Hussein i Miskar. 117. Ahmad i Pevandi. 118. Hassan i Shar Baf i Yazdi. 119. Muhammad Taki. 120. Muhammad Attar, brother of Hassan i Shar Baf. 121. Mullah Abdul Khalik who cut his throat in Badash from Tahiri named Dabi. 122. Hussein. 
123, Abul Qasim, brother of Hussein. 124, Mirza Muhammad Riza. 125, Mullah Haydar, brother of Mirza Muhammad Riza. 126, Mirza Mihdi. 127, Muhammad Ibrahim. 128, Muhammad Hussein, surnamed Dust Mal Giri Zan. 129, Muhammad Hassi E. Sheet Saz, a well known cloth manufacturer who attained the presence of the Bab. 130, Muhammad Hussein E. Attar. 131, Ustad Haji Muhammad E. Banar. 132, Mahmoud E. Mukari, a noted cloth dealer. He was newly married and attained the presence of the Bab in Shirik. The Bab urged him to proceed to the jaziri e kadra and to lend his assistance to Qudus. While in Tehran, he received a letter from his brother announcing the birth of a son and entreating him to hasten to Isfahan to see him and then to proceed to whichever place he felt inclined. I am too much fired, he replied, with the love of this cause to be able to devote any attention to my son. I am impatient to join Qudus and to enlist under his banner. 133. Seed Muhammad Rize i Pa Kali, a distinguished Seed and a highly esteemed divine, whose declared purpose to enlist under the banner of Mullah Hussein caused a great tumult among the ulamas of Isfahan. Among the believers of Shiraz, the following attained the station of martyrdom. 134. Mullah Abdullah, known also by the name of Mirza Sali. 135. Mullah Zainul Abidin. 136, Mirza Muhammad. Of the adherents of the faith in Yazd, only four have thus far been recorded. 137, the Seed, who walked on foot all the way from Khorasan to Bafarush, where he fell a victim to the bullet of the enemy. 138, Seed Ahmad, the father of Seed Hussein e Aziz, the amanuensis of the Bab. 139, Mirza Muhammad Ali, son of Seed Ahmad, whose head was blown off by the ball from a cannon as he was standing at the entrance of the fort, and who, because of his tender age, was greatly loved and admired by Qudus. 140. Sheikh Ali, son of Sheikh Abdul Khalik i Yazdi, a resident of Mashhad, a youth whose enthusiasm and untiring energy were greatly praised by Mullah Hussein and Qudus. Of the believers of Kazvin, the following were martyred. 141, Mirza Muhammad Ali, a noted divine whose father, Haji Mullah Abdul Wahab, was one of the most distinguished mushtahids in Qazvin. He attained the presence of the Bab in Shiraz and was enrolled as one of the Letters of the Living. 142, Muhammad Hadi, a noted merchant, son of Haji Abdul Karim, surnamed Bahban Bashi. 143, Seir Ahmad. 144, Mirza Abdul Jalil, a noted divine. 145, Mirza Mihdi. 146, from the village of Lahard, a man named Haji Muhammad Ali, who had greatly suffered as a result of the murder of Mullah Taki in Kazvin. Of the believers of Kui, the following have suffered martyrdom. 147, Mullah Mihdi, a distinguished divine, who had been one of the esteemed disciples of Seed Kazim. He was noted for his learning, his eloquence, and his staunchness of faith. 148. Mullah Mahmud Ikui, brother of Mullah Mihdi, one of the Letters of the Living and a Distinguished Divine. 149. Mullah Yusuf E. Ardibili, one of the Letters of the Living, noted for his learning, his enthusiasm and eloquence. It was he who had aroused the apprehension of Haji Karim Khan on his arrival at Kirman and who struck terror to the hearts of his adversaries. This man, Haji Karim Khan, was heard to say to his congregation, must needs be expelled from this town, for if he be allowed to remain, he will assuredly cause the same tumult in Kirman as he has already done in Shiraz. The injury which he will inflict will be irreparable. The magic of his eloquence and the force of his personality, if they do not already excel those of Mullah Hussein, are certainly not inferior to them. By this means he was able to force him to curtail his stay in Kirman, and to prevent him from addressing the people from the pulpit. The Bab gave, gave him the following instructions. You must visit the towns and cities of Persia and summon their inhabitants to the cause of God. On the first day of the month of Muharram in the year A.H. 1265, the 27th of November, A.D. 1848, you must be in Mazin, Iran, 
and must arise to lend every assistance in your power to Qudus. Mullah Yusuf, faithful to the instructions of his master, refused to prolong his stay beyond a week in any of the towns and cities which he visited. On his arrival in Mazinderan, he was made captive by the forces of Prince Miti Kuli Mirza, who immediately recognized him and gave orders that he be imprisoned. He was eventually released, as we have already observed, by the companions of Mullah Hussein on the day of the Battle of Vaskaz. 150. Mullah Jalil i Urumi, one of the letters of the living, noted for his learning, his eloquence, and tenacity of faith. 151. Mullah Ahmad, a resident of Maraki, one of the letters of the living, and a distinguished disciple of Sir Qazim. 152. Mullah Mihdi i Kandi, a close companion of Baha'u'llah, and a tutor to the children of his household. 153. Mullah Bakir, brother of Mullah Mithi, both of whom were men of considerable learning, to whose great attainments Baha'u'llah testifies in the Kitabi i Khan. 154. Seed Qazim, a resident of Zanjan and one of its noted merchants. He attained to the presence of the Bab in Shiraz and accompanied him to Isfahan. His brother, Seed Murtaza, was one of the seven martyrs of Tehran. 155. Iskandar, also a resident of Zanjan, who, together with Hassan and Kuli, bore the body of Mullah Hussein to the fort. 156. Ismail. 157. Kabilai Abdul Ali. 158. Abdul Muhammad. 159. Haji Abbas. 160. Syed Ahmad, all residents of Zanjan. 161. Syed Hussein E. Kula Duz, a resident of Bafurush, whose head was impaled on a lance and was paraded through its streets. 162. Mullah Hassan i Rashti. 163. Mullah Hassan i Bayaj Mandi. 164. Mullah ni Matula i Bafurushi. 165. Mullah Muhammad Taki i Karakhili. 166. Ustad Zainul Abidin. 167. Ustad Qazim, son of Ustad Zainul Abidin. 168. Ustad Ali Akbar, brother of Ustad Zainul Abidin. The last three were masons by profession, were natives of Kirman and resided in Qayyin, in the province of Khurasan. 169 and 170. Mullah Rize Isha and a young man from Bani Mir, was slain two days after the abandonment of the fort by Kudus in the Panj Shabi Bazaar of Bafurush. Haji Mullah Muhammad i Hamzi, surnamed the Shariat Madar, succeeded in burying their bodies in the neighborhood of the Majid i Qazim Beek and in inducing their murderer to repent and ask forgiveness. 170. Mullah Muhammad i Mu'alim i Nuri an intimate companion of Baha'u'llah, who was closely associated with him in Nur, in Tehran, and in Mazindaran. He was famed for his intelligence and learning, and was subjected, could have only expected, to the severest atrocities that have ever befallen the defender of the fort of Tabasi. The prince had promised that he would release him on condition that he would execrate the name of Kudus, and had pledged his word that, should he be willing to recant, he would take him back with him to Tehran and make him the tutor of his sons. Never will I consent, he replied, to vilify the beloved of God to the bidding of a man such as you. Were you to confer upon me the whole of the kingdom of Persia, I would not for one moment turn my face from my beloved leader. My body is at your mercy, my soul you are powerless to subdue. Torture me as you will, that I may be enabled to demonstrate to you the truth of the verse. Then wish for death, if ye be men of truth. A quote from the Quran 294. The prince, infuriated by his answer, gave orders that his body be cut to pieces and that no effort be spared to inflict upon him a most humiliating punishment. 172. Haji Muhammad i Karadi, whose home was situated in one of the palm groves adjoining the old city of Baghdad, a man of great courage who had fought and led a hundred men in the war against Ibrahim Pasha of Egypt. He had been a fervent disciple of Seed Qasim and was the author of a long poem in which he expatiated upon the virtues and merits of the Seed. He was seventy-five years old when he embraced the faith of the Bab, whom he likewise eulogized in an eloquent and detailed poem. He distinguished himself by his heroic acts during the siege of the fort, 
and eventually became a victim of the bullets of the enemy. 173. Said e Jabavi, a native of Baghdad, who displayed extraordinary courage during the siege. He was shot in the abdomen and, though severely wounded, managed to walk until he reached the presence of Qudus. He joyously threw himself at his feet and expired. The circumstances of the martyrdom of these last two companions were related by Seed Abu Talib e Sangsari, one of those who survived that memorable siege, in a communication he addressed to Baha'u'llah. In it he relates, in addition, his own story, as well as that of his two brothers, Seed Ahmad and Mir Abul Qasim, both of whom were martyred while defending the fort. On the day on which Khusro was slain, he wrote, I happened to be the guest of a certain Kabilai Ali Jan, the Karkuda of one of the villages in the neighbourhood of the fort. He had gone to assist in the protection of Khusro, and had returned and was relating to me the circumstances attending his death. On that very day, a messenger informed me that two Arabs had arrived at that village and were anxious to join the occupants of the fort. They expressed their fear of the people of the village of Kadikala, and promised that they would amply reward whoever would be willing to conduct them to their destination. I recall the counsels of my father, Mir Muhammad Ali, who exhorted me to arise and help in the promotion of the cause of the Baab. I immediately decided to seize the opportunity that had presented itself to me, and together with these two Arabs, and with the aid and assistance of the Qadquda, reached the fort, met Mullah Hussein, and determined to consecrate the remaining days of my life for the service of the cause he had chosen to follow. The names of some of the officers who distinguished themselves among the opponents of the companions of Qudus are as follows. 1. Prince Mihdi Kuli Mirza, brother of the late Muhammad Shah. 2. Suleiman Ka'i Afshar. 3. Haji Mustafa Khan Isur Tij. 4. Abdullah Khan, brother of Haji Mustafa Khan. 5. Abbas Kuli Khan i Larijani, who shot Mullah Hussein. 6. Nurullah Khan i Afghan. 7. Habibullah Khan i Afghan. 8. Dul Fakhar Khan i Karavuli. 9. Ali Aks Azka Khan i Du Dungi. 10. Kuda Murad Khan i Kurd. 11. Khalil Khan i Sabar Kui. 12. Jafa Kuli Khan i Surk Kari. 13. The Sartib of the Fauj i Kalbat. 14. Zakariye i Kadi Kalai, a cousin of Khusro and his successor. As to those believers who participated in that memorable siege and survived its tragic end, I have been thus far unable to ascertain in full either their names or their number. I have contented myself with a representative, though incomplete, list of the names of its martyrs, trusting that in the days to come the valiant promoters of the faith will arise to fill this gap and will, by their research and industry, be able to remedy the imperfections of this altogether inadequate description of what must ever remain as one of the most moving episodes of modern times.